works. You <laughs> left. Hi guys. Um, are we just gonna see if we can check in on her phone? <gasps> yeah, there we are. I just need to mute it. How do I mute this? Are we just gonna see if we can check in on her phone? Nope, now you closed it down. Um, oh, there's uh, three people. So you got it? Yeah. And Amazing. <clears throat> Hi guys and uh, welcome to our first Q&A in a long time. Q&A and a little bit update, energy update and update from the book. <laughs> um, today Pauline is gonna be with us. Hi. <laughs> and she has uh, her phone logged in where she can see your comments. So your comments will be, will be on and we can read it faster. So oh, Annette, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. <laughs> Hi, Annette and Holly. Yeah. So the comments come through me. Yes. <laughs> Normally I'm behind the camera, so this time it's like <laughs> okay. Party on Different. the screen. Yes. <laughs> so we're just gonna give everybody uh, a moment to log in. Let me hear. Is the sound good enough? Can you hear us well enough? Um, There was I a thumb up. The thumb up must be, be. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. Okay, I need to still get into this. Okay. Yeah. So apparently, yeah. Good so enough. Good here. Yes. Annette, hi, Pauline, and Christina. Cool. Nice. Super. Thank you, Holly. Okay. Hey, Thanks Carsten. Anna. Long time no see. Um, Holly. Kesvia. Perfect Sarah. sound. Beautiful. So, well, I'm gonna just uh, <laughs> keep giving people a few minutes to tap Yannick in. Yannick is um, here also. Yay! Yay, Yannick! <laughs> so nice. So we had this uh, Zoom meeting uh, at the book release date and it was so beautiful. I really loved that we could all connect together and yeah, spend this time uh, together. Um, today we're gonna do it on Facebook Live. So, so the way that you can ask your questions and the way that you can interact today is not where I can see your faces, but I can feel your energy always. And all you have to do is write in the comments below whatever question you may have to the universe, to us, um, yeah, whatever's on your heart. So there's more people tuning in. Nate is here. Barbara. Hello, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Isabella. I don't know about your guys, um, but for me, the last. Yeah, I don't even know where to start. Like, how have your life been? How have your life been the last few months? How many changes had have unfolded? <laughs> The last few months um, what I see very much going on is that we are in this big shift and and as I told uh, last time I, I published something was that I didn't feel the call for making a lot of updates because I felt that everybody needed time to search within they needed time to learn to listen to their own inner voice um, and connect with your individually truth. So for me to uh, talk loud about the moon or about the, the vibration running through the universe or or how we're gonna save Valhalla, uh, it just didn't feel like didn't feel like the moment for it. So I've been spending a lot of time fixing my teeth, but also doing grounded stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Love the grounding. <laughs> so for me. For me, that is really connecting to what makes me want to be here on Earth. It's connecting to the present moment. It's connecting to actually reconnecting to a part of myself in my younger years. Not that I'm not always connected to that, but, but to integrate it more. I had this big shift where, where I used to be this A-class fighter. And then I shifted completely to being this oh, thing um, because it was needed for that moment. The duality was needed. Duality is beautiful if we learn to 
balance it within ourselves. So in this time where I needed to be more grounded, I've been I've been fighting a bit more. <laughs> and what it does, it, it brings me, it allows me to see that part within myself. It allows me to look back into what that part have helped me with mm. all through the years. So for me to integrate that part from my childhood is to realize how much it has been helping me and how much um, how much love there is in these patterns representing himself. So a part of this live stream I want to share is that in this time we are facing periods and patterns from our past and within those patterns <clears throat> lies not only things we need to shift or things we need to fix but there lies a lot of beauty there's a reason why we have the patterns and the moment that we can look at them with love we can finally start to to understand them Uh, Isabella was saying crazy intense healing when you asked about what is going on in your life. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. There is a big amount of healing going on in the world. And Barbara was mentioning something about uh, trusting in the new. Yes. Which I think is really... Uh, True. Because we are... One thing is for sure. There's no going back. The world, how it was... When did Corona start being March. a thing? March? Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> half, <we> year, <laughs> half a year ago or something, no? Yeah, like, yeah. There's no going back to that because we, we've been asking and praying for a shift on a, on a global base for so long that in this moment in time, uh, it's actually our prayers being answered. But we're still in the middle of it. And in the middle of it, what we do is we fear the unknown and we cling to the past and to and let go of what were to fully be in the moment so we are open for what we can create that is the trick and here xenia asks oof changes question how to find the beauty in fear nice one xenia <coughs> like <it>. so <laughs> Duality is amazing, the way that it can present itself uh, in life. Like the, the one with fear, I can, I will give you two examples. One example is when you go skydiving, you are peeing your pants before you go up there. <laughs> You're freaking out. Like I literally told the guys that I skydived with that uh, if I died, I would hunt him because that I am this <laughs> <laughs> spiritual person and um, I didn't die. And the moment that, not that day, but the moment that you are in the air, it was the most peaceful, beautiful experience I ever, I have ever had. And when I landed, I, I could feel myself. I felt so free and proud and quiet inside. And I think that is what fear truly brings. It is that on the other side of fear is love. On the other side of fear is growth, right? So the other example is you can love everyone and it doesn't matter. But when you are in love with someone, you get insecure because you fear you do something wrong. You fear that you lose that person, you fear how that person might react so your whole system is shaken up but when you cross that fear when you face that fear when you you dare to to walk into what you fear the most on the other side it's love on the other side is this person um could be this person <laughs> that um that your heart might have been asked for. We fear the unknown more than anything because the, what the brain does, it learns patterns and then it repeats it. It learns through understanding it. It can only understand what it has seen, what it has experienced. So the unknown creates so much fear because you cannot yet place it within your human understanding. Therefore, fear is such an important role, has such an important role um, in our game on earth so the key to loving the fear is to understand what is on the other side of it beautiful 
So I have a question from Isabella. Uh, she asks, how do, how do you feel about travel restrictions? Do the world open up again? Does will? Yes and no. So, um, if I look into possible outcomes, it's still not written in stone exactly it's what's going to happen because it's still very much influenced by the energy that we send out, the energy that we feed and so forth. There will be changes in the way the world opens. There will be places where before a partly time cannot go unless we agree upon these vaccines. Um, so yes, the world will open, but not in the same way that it was before. And there will be changes. So the best thing we can do is not waiting for the world to become what it already were, but allowing ourselves to look inside, being in the moment, and look forward to what we can create. Um, I have been asked of a few people about this thing. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna do the vaccines no matter what, because it's not a vibrational match to anything within my system. Um, and I believe that the most intelligent mechanism made on this planet is our physical bodies like it's universal created right so whatever this balance is within us we are able to repair within ourselves um, so for me i will be influenced by these restrictions <laughs> if they come but that's part of the choice that i make and the only thing we can do is just wait for everything to outplay and, and when when we know what the new rules are, we can look into how can we create our life around it and how can we create our life and freedom in a form where we can maintain our health, love and freedom. Holly uh, Robinson asks, what is this intense sickness, excited feeling energy I have all the time lately, <laughs> in your opinion? Heart and heart, smiley heart. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> you've been asking for the feeling of love, you've been asking for the feeling of freedom, the feeling of excitement, and the universe is basically just giving you all of that. I know that this time might not be the perfect fit for it, <laughs> and it takes some time to integrate, but what it is, is it's a new door opening within you, it's a drive for wanting something more, something different, showing a deeper part of yourself. Beautiful. Um, Barbara answered or reacted as uh, accepting, letting it happen, uh, staying open within the positive, everything will be fine, uh, patience. So that's what she mm -hmm. commented. Um, Hannah has a question, how are children or a new fe fetus created in this chaotic time affected by the present energies? The unborn also, or just the or the one who pops out. And, and the born, fetus, I she asks know. children and and the fetus. So in the oh, belly, inside and outside. Inside and outside. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's start with the ones who are born within. The ones who are born into this time period will be influenced by the conditions of the parents. So, the the fear that the parents hold, the love that the parents hold, and and the way the parents are moving with this in this time and vibration. They are so small and this world reality is so new for them that the energy they link to the most is the energy of their parents and not so much the world circling around them. So as a parent, <laughs> you can help them so much in this process. <clears throat> the unborn children. The unborn children are still in the creation of their DNA. They're still in the creation of their physical being within your belly. So they are again influenced by your emotional state of being and of course your DNA as always. Um, the time influenced them in the form of the vibration that you take in via what you eat, what you drink, how you feel. Um, and that's basically helping them to create their DNA and blueprint for the time they are born into. But 
When that being said, an important thing to mention here is that every single child chooses when they want to incarnate. Yes and no. Okay. Yes, I will explain both sides. Every single child who are incarnated have chosen that they wanted to be incarnated in that time frame with those parents, always. So in that way and in that sense, you cannot do something wrong. Uh, the only thing that you can look into is, of course, how does it feel in my heart? How can I help the process uh, to be as beautiful and smooth as possible? But do never blame yourself for when it happens because the children um, cannot come until that they're supposed to be there. The reason why I, I, I pulled it back when I said they come blah blah is that for many people the children that wants to incarnate is around them for a long time before they incarnate. And for them, they don't understand time and space when they're not yet incarnated. So they will be like, come on, it's tomorrow already. Like, let me come down there. But you as a person, you as a person are not developed enough, free enough within your whole being to, to be able to create that life yet. Um, but it is our universal law that a kid will not be incarnated unless both parts are linked together at that moment where uh, like you choose it together you choose it together so even that you feel the pool for a long time and even that it, it may have feel like you have failed or um, you're afraid of doing it in the wrong time frame there is no wrong there is no wrong your heart knows both of your heart knows Annette asks a question. Can you tell us something about the Star Mothers and Lemuria? I can and I would love to, but it does not uh, belong to this time so much. Question for Elisa. Glad you are here. And Wait, I'll just... Okay, because back. right now what people need, they need to ground. <laughs> they need to understand the basic. Because they need to go through these emotionally... Uh, blockages in order of getting to the part where we can understand Lemuria and then and the mother earth and all the star sisters and mothers and systems We need to first look into the essential of humanity We are in this big shift where people are shaken up and For now what people need the most is looking into relationships relationship with themselves relationship with the people around them relationships to every living being this is what is needed for this now. Without that, there's no way they can understand the depth of who we are, where we come from, who was here and when they were here, because then we are flying away. And for now, we need to be here. We need to manifest the world reality that we truly wish to be a part of. And this connects very nicely what you're saying to Rob. He wrote it in Dutch, but he says he's sitting in a in a kind of fight within himself. Uh, he sees all those people around him that are not awake, and he asks, like, do I need to shake them up and wake them up, or should I think of myself? And um, yeah, do I need to take care that the high vibration comes first into my own body? Um, and yeah, so much happens around, and so many people are not awake. Kind of. Yes, so you understand. Sure. I hope I translated it right. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. So the best thing that we can do is um, paying attention to your own energy in this moment. It's to always speak your truth, but not wanting to push people where they are not ready to go. So it's really important for you to just ground <laughs> within yourself, within this present moment, and, and then just follow the flow of what is, because the people who are ready to to change the people who are ready to listen to you uh, they will come to you they will cross your path it is uh, which is a Danish word on uh, I don't know in the in other languages on you cannot not do it you know <laughs> it's, it's a nice word yeah uongolit. they are uongolit. Uh, another question is can I relax and feel safe in the feeling of losing control yeah sure it's your own choice <laughs> Boom. There you go. Um, Anouk, when my
my son goes to bed, he is very afraid and has many bad thoughts. He then has a feeling he wants to be dead or he wants the planet to disappear. In this, is this because of the fear in the world? And he asks for your help. First of all, I love you, Yannick. Second of all, um, oh. let me tell you this. You and me both. Before I go to bed, I get these massive panic attacks. I have these deep, deep, dark dreams. <laughs> and it is not about you and it's not about me. I also even have these feelings of wanting to leave the planet, not feeling I belong, thinking that it doesn't matter if I'm here or not, I can't change it. But the truth is what we are feeling is we are feeling everything that is going on because you are such a sensitive creation and you're part of these newbies, new kids. Uh, Amazing. <laughs> so cute. Um, and you are not only feeling you, you're feeling everyone. And there's so much going on at this moment, so much fear. So many people are dying. So many people do wish to die. And many of these thoughts and feelings that you are holding are not even yours. It's you can picking up of the collective. So my advice for you and what I want to tell you is I see you and I am with you and we are feeling the same when we go to bed and for me what helps is I know you are a boy but I have like these teddy bears that I sleep with and um, I'm listening to angel music from a just YouTube channel different angel music with a uh, frequency that help me to feel my own peace my own heart and when i wake up in the morning okay what we can do when we wake up in the morning is remind ourselves that what we're feeling is a part of all this chaos going on in the world but it's not necessarily us yes <laughs> um a question uh, how can i look for good relationships when others to last long with different cultures. What? How can I look for good relationships with others to last long with different cultures? Intercultural uh, relationships. Let me let me look at this as if if you were friends, right? If the relationship was a relationship to a friend, how would it last long? You will accept the other person the way the other person are. That person will accept you back. You will give each other the space that you need for both of your cultures and you will meet on the ground where you have something in common, where you choose to be together, right? This is how you would do it in a friendship. This is why you can have so many friends with so many different colors without it influencing anything. What happens when it comes closer to each other is that then your culture is... Um, <laughs> behavior might not be a match and what you need to figure out together is which parts do you need which parts can you meet each other in and where do you allow where do you need to allow each other to have each other's differences what can be very tricky is when you have different um uh, wow why oh got it okay can you hold this <laughs> Jesus Christ, I was like I wanted to press on. <laughs> Sorry. And when, 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 you, <laughs> when you have like uh, somebody who's a Christian and somebody who's a Muslim, then you have these two um, very strong beliefs from your whole family background, right? So you have pressure from your roots, from your backgrounds, but still, who you are together on a daily basis is up to you guys. What do you want to feed within your life? What feels right within your heart? Uh, I think this is my best advice how to do this uh, between cultures because it's, it's never easy. If you want to stick to what you learned, it's not going to last. You need to create your own, a new way, a new pathway. Your own culture. Take the best of each religion, take the best of each culture, mix it together in a big bath of love, trust and loyalty. And fun. 
and a little bit of discussions because or else it's going to get boring. <laughs> Annette asks, what is the most important thing for humanity to do right now? He, I love you. I just told you. <laughs> but it is um, humanity right now. What we need to look into is relationships. Relationship to ourselves. Relationship to each other. Friends, family, animals, everything is built on relationships in every single form, every single way. So how is your relationship to yourself? How do you treat the people around you? How do you treat the water? How do you treat the animals? Every single thing. And why I say relationships is because when I say that it is love, and we need to look into what we love and love is all around us. There's many people in this moment who are not yet ready to understand that. Therefore, we call it relationships. That is one thing, because when your full focus in on, is on that, you ground in the moment and you no longer think about the, the world ending or Corona or whatever government thing, <laughs> because you are busy supporting your own inner self and the people around you. And when you look into that vibration, when you look into the vibration of steady, safety, love, expansion, you are creating a world reality that you wish to be a part of. You're creating a community that can support you in the growth and the life that you wish to live on this planet. We need each other. We were sent here as individually beings, but we are all part of source. Why? Because we wanted to experience ourselves as uh, disconnected from each other, but yet <laughs> we are like magnets. We belong together. We were here, not sent here to do it as one person. It's not a one man job. We are here together as, do it as one community, one world, one unit. No matter cultures, backgrounds, like all my friends comes from different planets everywhere else. <laughs> everywhere else like everywhere else literally <laughs> shape form sizes it's one big mess but what we all have in common is the love and the passion and the very bad humor good humor good humor <laughs> come on <laughs> um, another question so, or, or yeah uh, Thank you. But do you think one nation, uh, one people will uh, will apply entire world to build peace? No. I'm sorry. So the thing is, um, for so many centuries, we have been split on earth. For so many centuries, we have learned ego, we have learned separation, we have learned me over you, you are different color, I smell different. You know, we have learned separation as such a deep part of our creation that from that and into becoming one unit, um, there is a big step. I know that other places, other planet systems, home, we are one. There is nothing but one. <laughs> so, um, I will say yes, it is possible, but no, it's not for this time. What is for this time is to reconnect, re, re make balance on earth. And within that, as I told you, we have to look into relationship, strengthening our communities, and then accept each other for who we are, where we are, and And also accept those who are not ready to move forward. If there's something that went wrong in Bibles and in Qurans and, and these stories, it's how we judge the people who are not willing or ready to make the shift. We shouldn't. We simply have to love them for who they are, where they are at, but choose where we wish to go. There's Lemuria? another question that came through about Lemuria. If there's anything that you can share about Lemuria, maybe connected to the same topic about uh, grounding, landing here, I don't know, or not. <laughs> <laughs> Any 
something that can uh, support the energy that is already here. I would love to tell a lot about Lumiria. I would love to tell a lot about the people that used to be here, the people who were sent to to help the planet of water because that's what this planet is it's the planet of water right like we are basically 75 percent water ourselves so lemuria is connected to that consciousness the consciousness of water the consciousness the knowledge of water and life but within this time humanity needs something else so for today this is what I want to tell, and uh, next time, next week, I'll take it back. We will, we will take it back, and we will see where people are at. Because what is most important for me is that the energy is flowing and it's supporting the moment of what people need. That being said, you don't have more questions, right? Or I no? have one more that I, I find interesting. About, okay, uh, cool. Go for it. Uh, how do we see the age of Aquarius affecting us? The Aquarian <laughs> age. What is the Aquarian age? <laughs> you know these things, no? Me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Kind of. That there must be like flow like and feelings <laughs> and water. <laughs> from your heart and not not letting all the conditioning speak it's it's an age where people are way more free in their way of feeling themselves they can be can it's a be. it's a it's, it's an age where it's open up for the possibility to be more free but it, the choice is yours you have to choose if you're ready for it you have to choose if that is the direction that you want to go point <laughs> point <laughs> yes <laughs> let me see if there's something more yeah. Um, how can I ground, uh, relax and sleep? This pain is so extreme, I can't surrender or have any consciousness how to get out. Sibren. Okay. Pain will always be there until the moment that you accept it. As long as you try to run away from it, it will only get worse. The moment you embrace it and and love yourself, even with that, it will stop growing. It will stop having control over you. But when your whole life centers around getting away from your pain, getting centered around fighting this part of you, uh, it can only grow. What we feed is what grows. So accept it the way it is, accept yourself with that and love, um, yeah, love is too, too early to say, but acceptance, acceptance of where you're at, fully facing it, fully facing you. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the functional reality of the worlds in between? What? <laughs> Um, what is the functional reality of the worlds in between? So, do you mean from when we cross from this life to the next? Is, is that what you mean? Maybe? I don't know. Ronya. Ronya. Ronya, let us know what, uh, what you mean with, uh, with uh, those worlds in between. Yeah, so do you mean uh, when we cross from this life and then in between before we come to the next life? Or do you mean... The ghosts, the ghost leftovers, they're still here on the earth before they cross over because they forgot to cross over? Or do you just simply mean the reality, in between realities, in the multiverse that is existing everything at once? <laughs> She's probably gonna answer. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting, I'm, I'm scrolling for you, I'm waiting for your answer. Cool. Yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Um, oh. Well, someone asks... Gitana, how do I know from which planet I am? I want to know. I feel that from child I am not from here. So what I tell the people closest to me, 
is that um, I like everyone to figure it out themselves. So I always open doors, <laughs> but it is for you to walk through them. It is certain that you have been other places than here. It is certain that you have been around uh, Pleiades, for example, and four other planet systems. I would not say that you come from one of these per se. That is up to you to feel where you feel the most linked to, the most home with. So when you figure it out, let me know. Yeah, that's it. I didn't get any more answers. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, in that case... <laughs> yeah, my turn? <laughs> Your turn. Okay. So, Annette and I, we wrote this, uh, we wrote this book. And um, I am not going to read my own stuff. So, <laughs> so we have Pauline today, and she's gonna read just a little bit of something. We, we scrolled around the book, and I opened a page, and we laughed. Um, <laughs> you read it. <laughs> I read it, <laughs> and I was like, "This, this is it. This is what you're gonna share with the world today." So, we get the table two. Um, we get the table two. <laughs> So it's a part of uh, the chapter Oneness and Sexuality. And we can show the book here. I don't know. The there you go. Yeah. It's a bit hard with the light. I am Elisa. <laughs> Elisa. I mean, you are. <laughs> I'm Elisa. <laughs> right now it's you. <laughs> okay, good. So uh, the question that it starts with is, but we do not have to do the whole Kundalini part to feel total bliss and oneness when we have sex, do we? Of course not. What I also would like to address is that a lot of people nowadays is letting sex become an ego game. And everything that we do through our ego will never be enough. Entering the act of sexuality with the intention, I want to feel the excitement within me. And then there are all those different kinds of positions, mostly done not knowing how to perform them energetically. In the ego game, it will be like searching for something, reaching a point, and you release something, and after the act you feel empty again. The whole connection thing doesn't appear, and that's why you keep searching that state over and over. You only get the bliss for one second, or max five seconds. It becomes the ongoing process of searching for that state over and over again. When we do the whole magnetic oneness act, it feels like your whole system is blown away and you're one with everything. It is a pure feeling within your whole system and it lasts much longer than five seconds. The whole release part, the orgasm, is not even a part of the healing itself. That is just the having children part, the truth, is you can do it even without physical contact. Just look at each other doing the act energetically. But when you do include the physical form, it is easier to manifest it on a human level. People always search for the closest they can get to feeling of unconditional love. For many people, this feeling is found in the moment of release and the orgasm, or whatever is giving them the feeling of bliss, the feeling of love, and, the, and they keep sharing that state of mind instead of creating it within themselves. I was born without these needs because that does not exist in my energetic flow and therefore I do not have it. I am able to create it if the other person has the energy and transmits it. And then I have a choice if I want to step into this energy field and be part of it or not. But it is not created naturally within my system. The whole human need for sexuality, I never had it. But I have realized that it, is, that it will be there if I wish to have a child then the feeling would be, I want to create this life force within me. Well, Elisa, some people having a hard time living without a partner might feel that it would be kind of a blessing to be <laughs> like you. <laughs> yes, I was going to say that. And we both smile, suddenly realizing that some people sitting close to us are very quiet, listening, trying to look as if they are doing something else. But that's fine, and Elisa continues. What is important is, we are created by nature as natural form, and you should be free to express what you feel is the best for you. Feel as free as you can within yourself. Be natural and be okay with it. Just be true to yourself. 
a lot of very young people feel that they are ex expected to do sexual <laughs> things they are not ready for and sometimes take part in acts that might hurt them. They truly need to learn to listen to and respect themselves. The world is in a kind of overhype. <laughs> and, <many, laughs> and many think they have to be like the ones on YouTube channels or the porn moves, movies. Two of our most seen reality show are Temptation Island and Paradise Hotel and everything they are focusing on is having sex. But since I always see two sides of everything, I can see that the reality shows drags us out of the whole shame part of sexuality, the lie. If you have sex, you're a bad person. And in that way, it creates a form of freedom. But what is needed today is for young people to search within themselves, in their souls. And it is also very important not to create a new way of thinking like this is the way it is supposed to be. That's good. Point. So, yeah, that was a little piece of the book. And if you guys have any questions or requests for next week, we um, we are ready to answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, for the rest, I just want to say thank you all for being a part of this live stream and this time, and have faith. Have faith in that everything gonna not be the same but it's gonna be good we are able to create we're created to, to create so much magic and you are not alone none of you are alone we are in this together so namaste mm -hmm. <laughs> till next time till next time that's all i don't know how to put the finish but